morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jess. I'm so excited to see you all here in person and online. Deacon Sue is also leading worship with me today, as well as our lovely worship team. And I want to invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship with me this morning with our confession and forgiveness, which you are going to find printed on the screen. We confess. Holy God, we confess that we do not always love our neighbor. In our selfishness, we have feared and despised others, even to the point of hatred. We confess that we have been hurt by others in our selfishness, forgiveness, and reconciliation at times are just impossible for us. We know that nothing is impossible in you. We come to you seeking healing and wholeness for us. Help us whenever possible to live in peace with others, to seek reconciliation and healing and forgiveness. For your son came and lived among us, was betrayed and denied, abused and put to death. He rose again and came with the message of peace to those who had denied him and abandoned him. May we walk in his ways. Amen. For nothing is impossible with God. There is no place you can go, no end of the earth you can run where God cannot find you. There is nothing on earth or beyond death that can separate you from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, you are forgiven, you are loved, you are reconciled to God. Go and live with the love of God. Amen. All right, uh, have you stay standing for our next song. Jesus, the name above every other name. 
You may be seated. A reading from Acts, the fourth chapter. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Here ends the reading. The second lesson is from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Here ends the reading. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who would believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that, also, that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Heavenly Creator, gracious and loving God, open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts that we may hear your word and feel your love. Amen. It is so wonderful to see all of you. It is so exciting to be in a very full church, hear your voices, hear your prayers. So welcome this morning. Today we continue to focus on our sermon series and congregational theme of Beloved Community. In the past few weeks, Pastor Jim and Pastor Jessica have offered their wisdom and reflection and have given us much to consider as we examine who we are called to be. The title of today's sermon is All In For Love. And today we were offered this trio of beautiful scripture passages that Becky just read that lead us down the path of living as one recipients of God's radical love, a love conveyed by the words and actions of Jesus, a love that is inextricably interconnected with the triune God. A few years ago at our Synod Assembly, Bishop Dave, who was serving as bishop at the time, was leading our worship. He asked all that were gathered, are you all in? Jesus calls us to be all in. He is all in, are you? 
Bishop Dave was speaking to each of us and challenging us, challenging us as individuals as well as a collective of communities of congregation and the Oregon Synod. As if to say, how do you imagine that our Lutheran community, who are we and how can we be in the lives of many? How do we take the message that we receive in this sacred space and burst out our doors to bring the message of love and hope to others? How do we put those words and intentions into actions? And thinking about our scriptures, scripture readings today, I'm always in awe of how an ancient message seems so fitting for us today. This morning, we started off by hearing from the book of Acts. It is also known as the Acts of the Apostles, which really is fitting when you consider that the word apostle comes from the Greek meaning one who is sent out or one who is to deliver a message. Acts offers a post-resurrection perspective of those who have witnessed the death and resurrection of Jesus. This reading offers almost a Nirvana-like experience that I found myself being in awe of and wanting. We heard these words, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Everything they owned was held in common. There was not a needy person among them. Having the experience of living in very urban Southeast Portland, where many of my neighbors live in tents on streets, sidewalks and parks, as well as seeing tent communities as I drove here to church on I-405. The idea of having no one in need is a stunning perspective in existence for, which does not clearly exist today. Indeed, there are many amongst us in need. So in the midst of that reality, how do we respond? How might we find ourselves creating some semblance of that early Christian community? The Reverend Dr. Mitzi Smith is a New Testament professor at Columbia Theological Seminary, and she offers these words. The resurrection calls and enables us to perform powerful, tangible acts that coincide with human need. The magnitude with which God's presence and power is shown coincides with the spiritual transformation in the hearts and souls of those who heard and believed the resurrection news that God raised Jesus. We are summoned to be channels of God. So how might we all be a channel of God? You know, it can be one relationship at a time, one act of love at a time. It doesn't mean you've got to change the whole world, though that would be really nice if you could, but even small acts and small gestures can make a huge difference. Recently, I was humbly reminded of just that and having a conversation with someone living on the street who asked me for help. I found that even the small gesture of asking him what his name was was so meaningful. His name was Marcus. And actually, it wasn't my money he wanted. He wanted just to have conversation. He wanted to be treated as someone who was heard and seen and was held in dignity. So despite my hope in high school, when I had the vision of being a social worker who would solve all the problems of poverty in Chicago, which clearly I've not accomplished quite yet, I'm reminded that we can always strive to make a difference one person at a time. So what is our vision here, beloved community, in trying to create a community where no one has needs? Well, we have a pretty good start. I think of looking out our door to see our food pantry that distributes a massive amount of food to people in need. Our safe, pro safe parking program that is gonna be starting soon that we will welcome neighbors who can have a safe place to park their car where they live. We also have supplies that you all gave to last year that helped our neighbors who are served by the Blanchet House and Night Strike last year. We had the people of Alaska and Central Washington touched by the very ministry that our high school and middle schoolers, along with our youth ministry team provided this summer, plus so much more. Clearly there is much to do in our communities we live in around the globe Soon we will have some immigrants from Afghanistan arriving in Oregon who will need a helping hand. I just between services had a congregant who said, what are we gonna do? How can we maybe help these people that are coming? And I think there's more for us to have conversation about. 
So yes, there are still many amongst us in great need, but for the individuals and the families that are served, it has made a remarkable difference. So take heart and continue the amazing work that emanates from this congregation and from your lives. But indeed, there is much to do. A fitting companion to the reading from Acts is our brief passage from Hebrews. There's a verse that precedes today's reading I wanna share with you, which is from verse 17, which says, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And it leads to the words we heard today. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. You know, provoke is such an interesting word. And I can assure you, being one of eight children and having four brothers, when I think of provoke, I think of one of my brothers bugging me. And there were many opportunities for that. But it's interesting, as you look more closely at the word provoke, it has many meanings. Yes, it, it means to anger, to irritate, to annoy, or create disputes. But then there's another definition, which is to excite, to call forth, to stimulate, or to influence, to take action. In the Greek translation, one of the definitions is incitement to good, to stir to action. This passage from Hebrews also conveys that we are not to neglect to meet together. Clearly, you've heard that, that message, right? Because you are all here, that we are more than just individuals that have an individual faith experience. We are faith because we are here together. To be a follower of Jesus is to be part of a greater whole. So what are the ways we are being or might be provoked to love? How are we provoking others to love? We can do that by paying attention by being in awe of the gracious and unexpected love that is offered by another. That feeling you get in your heart and your mind and your soul when you've graciously given something of yourself and you realize you got more back than you gave from that person who was your recipient. We have the compassion that Jesus offered to anyone without condition, anyone and everyone. Yes, including folks that might drive us crazy or with whom we disagree or who we don't like. We are called to serve them as well. Recently, the actions of one of my colleagues at Salem Hospital provokes me to want to love others. I work with this amazing nurse in the intensive care unit. Her name is Jess. You know, a pretty good name. We, we, it's a familiar name for St. Matthew. Jess is very weary due to the high volume of patients we've seen at our hospital. We actually have set records in the history of Salem Hospital for the most patients we've ever had in the hospital's history recently. Not something we've aspired to do, but we are called to care for people. And like all of the ICU nurses, Jess has cared for many people with COVID-19, which places her, a young mother, at great personal risk anytime she enters a patient's room. And the bottom line is the people that spend the most time with patients at their bedside it's nurses, it's nurses' aides. They are the, the folks clearly on the front lines. Last week, there was a patient who was nearing the end of their life, who had no family, no friends. Apparently, it was not someone who was very beloved by many people and was alone in their final hours. So Jess believed that this patient, like any patient who is dying, should not be alone. So she spent the last hours of this person's life, someone with COVID-19, being at their bedside for hours to assure them that they would not ever be alone. The profound act of love and compassion shown by Jess to someone she didn't know before that morning, someone who'd been abandoned by others in, in their life, but she determined that this person deserved love at this very sacred time and place. Love, Jess was all in. Now that was indeed true love of neighbor. It was stunning. I am humbled and inspired by that action that she took. We come to our gospel reading today, this exquisite moment in Jesus' life. This portion of John's gospel is part of what's called the farewell discourse, which is chapters 14 through 17 of John's gospel. You know the scene, Jesus has gathered with his disciples for one last meal. Jesus is still teaching and leading his disciples, offering his final hopes and instructions. 
And I can imagine he's thinking, golly, I hope you've been listening before now because I have a lot to say. Jesus ends this time with this intimate prayer in which he formally addresses himself to God, his Father. And it is a prayer that focuses on unity, on all being one. Jesus says these words, as you, Father, are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus says further, you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus prays that those who follow him may be drawn into the life of the Holy Trinity. It is very clear that though Jesus' words are addressed to the Father, they are meant for everyone, then and now, as he prays, those who will believe in me, for the believers yet to come. These words from Jesus were intended for a community that desperately needed at that time a sense of belonging to each other. So how might that be reflective of this time and place we find ourselves living in? Indeed, those prayers that Jesus offered, they are meant for us too. Jesus demonstrates through the intimate interconnection between him and God, and that we are to seek connection as well with God. So to imagine, really to know that at that moment, Jesus was praying for us, for those yet to come. We continue to be held in those prayers, in his care for us, his support for us, and love for us, always. Jesus also offered these words. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than me. Now that's hard to imagine. It's kind of a high bar, right? How do we do greater works than Jesus? But Jesus had faith in us. In closing, I offer the humble words from St. Francis of Assisi. Someone, and I think of him because tomorrow is the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. It's a special day in my family because it was a day my amazing grandfather died. But it's also a day that we bless all of our animals and having a creature that I'm quite attached to, my boxer, Alice, um, I wanted to offer the St. Francis prayer as we end today. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is error, truth. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. And where there is darkness, light. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please rise as you are able, and let us say together our statement of faith. We believe in God, the creator, who created and is creating everything, the universe, the world, the planets and animals, and us, each of us, unique, individual, and beloved of God. We believe in God, the Christ, who saved and is saving everything, the universe, the world, the plants and animals, and us. Each of us, unique, individual, and beloved of the Christ. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who guided and is guiding everything, the universe, the world, the plants and animals, and us each of us, unique, individual, and beloved of the Spirit. We believe that this one God in three persons is present among us, working directly in our lives and the lives of all who are born into this world, striving to bring us back into harmony with all creation and with God, forgiving, healing, touching everyone, never rejecting anyone who willingly received this freely offered gift of love and eternal life, eternal life. Amen. And at this time, it's an invitation to our offering. We are so humbled by all the gifts of your time. We also, if you feel so moved to 
help donate to the ministries here. You have that opportunity both here in person, but also online. And please stay standing while we sing our offertory song. You may be seated. Oh, actually, so never mind. Please be seated.
All right, kids, I would love for you all to come up here from preschoolers to high schoolers. And if you need to bring a, an adult with you, you are welcome to bring an adult as well. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Wow, are we going to have room for everyone? Maybe should I move back here? You can, yeah, there. Wow, this is so awesome. I would love to just count how many people are up here. Thank you for all coming up today. How's everyone doing? Good. So happy to see you. I'm Deacon Sue. I don't know all of you. So being a deacon is a little bit like being a pastor, but it's a little different. We can have a conversation later. Someone asked me after the first service, well, what is the difference? So we have been talking a lot about love. And I brought some things that I wonder what they make you think about when I show you. What do you think? So I have some things. What are these things? Yeah, I have that. I, have a, I brought a lot of them. This is kind of a cool one that says love. And do you notice what it says on my mask? Love. love. Isn't that cool? So what's a day that you think a lot about love? Yes. Valentine's Day. Is it, no, no. Is that what you were going to say? Oh, okay. What, what did you want to say? Christmas. Oh, that's a good day. What else? Birthdays. What else? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Father's Day and Mother's Day. Oh, what a great idea. Father's Day and Mother's Day. What else? Every season. Every season. How about? Daddy has one. Jesus. Jesus Day. Jesus. Every day is Jesus Day. I had the baby. My baby went over there. Right oh, the baby went over there? Yeah, the baby's behind there. Oh, okay. Is there a grown-up with this baby, maybe? No. Oh, hi. Hi. You want to come here, sweetie? Not so much, huh? So I like your idea. I think every day should be a day that we celebrate love. What do you think about that idea? So who taught you about love? Who's taught you about love? Who's that? God. God. Who else has taught you about love? Jesus. Jesus. Who else? Family. Your family. My mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Who else? Your um, papa and your grandma. There was someone who were, I forget. I think I just learned it somewhere, some way, somehow. All right. Someone in your life. What's that? Your pastor, well, that's a great idea, too. And yes. Grandma and Papa. Your mom and dad. That's a popular choice today. Yes, sweetie. Your friends. Your friends. Well, I brought a picture of the person who taught me most about love. Who do you think that might be? Mom. It's my mom. Her name was Peggy. Peggy knew a lot about love because she had seven other children besides me, so she was either brave or loving or foolish. But um, anyway, so she was pretty amazing. But you know, she taught me a lot about God, a lot about how to work in a church. She was one of the first people that always volunteered at my parish, St. Athanasius in Chicago. But anyway, she and my dad taught me a lot about love. Who might you teach about love? Who could maybe you teach about love? Hmm. Oh, I see pointing. You could teach your friends, your brothers. That's not always easy, I know. Some days. Who else could you teach about love? Your sisters, yes. Who else? Who else, sweetie? Everybody in the world. We've got it covered. All right, who else? A polar bear. Well, yeah, you know what? Tomorrow is St. Francis feast day and St. Francis loved animals. So I like that answer because animals teach us a lot about love, don't they? Yep. 
All right, so today I have something for you. I have hearts for each of you. One that you can keep, but I'm gonna give you an extra one because if there's someone in your life that you think could use some love, I want you to give this to them, okay? So if you wanna pass these out over there, there's a lot of, so many of you today. Can you pass those out? And who always loves you? When you walk into church, well, who, what are we reminded of? Who always loves you? God, right, and Jesus. Jesus loved everyone, right? Didn't matter if you were having a good day or a bad day, Jesus loved you. So thank you for coming up here and tell me who doesn't, who still needs a heart? Who need, you need a heart? There we go, we got, you can get a couple. And then the preschoolers, everyone wants you to get your hearts can go back to your seat, except the preschoolers because Miss Janae and Miss Carrie are gonna spend some time with them. Who needs a heart still? And you give those extras away, okay? All right. There you go. There you go. Thanks for coming up, you guys. I hope you have a really great worship. There you go. Did you get some? All right. That's all right. You bet. Oh, you can have more than one, sweetie. I have plenty. Yes, there I am. Hi. Oh, thank you. I already got a heart. Good job, Austin. That's nice of you. If you are a parent of a preschooler, can you head back up here with your preschooler, please? Parents of preschoolers and preschoolers, head on up here. You could just turn right around and head back up to those steps. Some of us are hanging out doing puzzles up here. <laughs> Come on up. You guys, yep, you can just get on the steps. Parents, if you want to be behind them, you can stand or sit. I'd, I'm not picky. Hi. How are you? You're ready to preach, huh? I saw you going up there to preach. Yeah, I did. Preach it, girl. Um, okay. Preschoolers have been in together in faith with the adults in their family, and we have been talking about worship. We t did worship things today. Did anybody hear Deacon Sue preaching to you? Yeah. We hear God's word, right? That's what we do in worship. What else do we do to worship? We did some things with these folks over here. What did we do? What did we do? Reagan? Hey, Reagan. Ha <laughs> ha. I know you know. What do we do with those people over there? We sing to God. We don't just sing, right? We sing to God, right? Because we're not just singing to sing, right? Sometimes I do that in my car, like I sing to God and like anybody else who can hear. Um, but yeah, I sing. Okay, so we sing to God. And a few minutes ago, we saw the plates go around. Remember what we do? We, what is this that we were doing? We were giving back to God, right? We listen to God. We sing to God. We listen to God's word. We all talked about all the ways we, and we also pray. And so we're going to share a little prayer um, this is a prayer of confession of forgiveness. You can pray along with us. You might need to confess. I'm not saying anything bad about you, but you might. All right, so you guys ready to pray with me? They're very interested in stickers. That's cool. This is a pray after me prayer. That's okay. You ready? Here we go. I'm sorry, God. I did wrong things last week. Please forgive me, Jesus. God says, I forgive you. Jesus says, your wrongs are all gone. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. What do we say at the end? Amen. Amen. Nicely done. Very good. Can you guys give them a hand? Because, you know, if you're preschool and you pray in front of everyone. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Come see me. I have a little gift for you on your way back. Come by and see me. There you go. All right. Will you please stand with me if you're comfortably able? 
This week and the past few weeks, we've talked a lot about love, love from God, love from Jesus, love in the triune God, love of the neighbor, love of the world. And one of the really fantastic things about coming together on a Sunday morning, gathered in love to worship God, is that we have this tangible meal here, a symbol of God's love that not only nourishes our bodies, but also nourishes our hearts and our minds and our souls. And so this morning, we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread has been broken, the wine has been poured. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all are welcome at God's table. You may be seated and come forward when the time is ready. For those of you who are at home, if you are with other people, I would invite you to serve one another, and if you are alone, please hear this. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord.
please stand if you're comfortably able. I will briefly close the table. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Um, we are actually going to transition into announcements, so you can stand, actually, if you're comfortably able. Deacon Sue is going to join me. I mean, you can sit. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a morning. Yeah. <laughs> Should I give them more instructions? Do you want to kneel now? We can do some jumping jacks. I'm so glad we're not at a Catholic parish. <laughs> My three knee surgeries are so grateful that we're not at a Catholic parish. So we have a few announcements for you before we go into our prayers of the people and then our closing song. Um, the first is that Dorothy Jacobson, who passed away recently, her memorial service is this Saturday the 9th at 1 p.m. So if you are so inclined, please join us to celebrate her life and commit her to God um, and also keep her family and friends and loved ones in your prayers. Um, I have the wrong post-it note up. Do you want to talk a little bit about new members? Yes, and do we want to invite them up now? Oh, actually, yeah. I'll just I'll do my next announcement. Okay. So, in her sermon, Deacon Sue talked about safe parking, the safe parking program here at St. Matthew. If you haven't heard about it, um, it's uh, something that the board actually voted in in 2019, but we were waiting for approval from Washington County, and COVID definitely slowed that down. But it's a program through um, the city of Beaverton. Um, they have a particular program that the name is, uh, the safe parking program, but it's, um, good so grief, I can't find it. Anyways, there's, uh, I can't hear you, but that's okay. Anyway, safe parking program. We are going to be having three guests um, staying on our property in their vehicles as a part of this program through the city of Beaverton to help them transition to more stable and long-term housing. Um, so again, this is something the board voted um, in in 2019, but our guests are going to begin um, staying here soon. So you know they have signed a contract not only with the city of Beaverton, but also with us as a St. Matthew community. So they have obligations to us to follow particular rules, and we have obligations to them to follow particular rules. And one of them is their right to privacy. And so as our guests begin staying on our campus, we ask that you would give them their privacy. Um, don't um, approach them intera or interact with them unless it's in an official capacity through a program or what have you at St. Matthew. This is for their safety and their privacy, their right to be in what is their home at this time without having someone coming up to them all the time. There will, of course, be um, opportunities to care for them, um, but we just want you to um, respect their privacy. Um, we also want to thank the foundation for giving money towards making it possible to have these folks stay on our campus and give them the amenities that they need and deserve. If you have questions about the safe parking program, um, you can absolutely reach out to myself or Deacon Sue or Pastor Jim. Um, you can also reach out to um, uh, Kim, our board president, or Chuck Westwick, who's been very actively involved, and Rance Anderson, who is a board member. We have been in communication um, with our neighbors as well, the people who live um, right around the church, so please know that we've been in communication with them. Thank you for your support of that program. Um, we're really excited to love our neighbors in a new way. Yes. Um, let's see. Next Sunday is Lift Sunday, Living in Faith Together. So in between our two services, we will not have faith formation. We will not have Sunday school. We will not have any outside groups or separate groups meeting. We will have all of us together, hopefully outside, weather permitting, but we have a contingency plan if that's not the case, having fun, forming memories, bonding together, participating in an activity together. So please come at 9.15 next Sunday to our Lift Sunday to have some fun together with people of all ages. Every single person is welcome and invited. Even if you think that you are not a part of it, you are. So come and be there. We're really excited to share in this new thing with you. There will be coffee, right? 
Yes, I believe Holy yes. Grounds will be open. Yes, yes. so Getting bring a your thumbs coffee up from Michael too. Walker, so. Lutherans can't do without their coffee. There will be coffee available. So yes. please come next Sunday in between services and of course to worship. Yes. Um, with that, we are actually going to welcome some new members before we close. So if you are a new member here at St. Matthew, will you please come up here? You don't have to speak or anything. We're just going to introduce you. Don't hurry up here now. There we go. Yeah, you guys have to come too. Sorry. So at the first service, I invited folks to introduce themselves to the new members in between services. We don't have that opportunity anymore. So after service, please feel free to greet these folks. Yeah. This is the Turner family. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. I know it's everyone's favorite thing to be dragged in front of uh, the congregation. The Turners have actually been worshiping with us for a while, right? Um, how long? Since they wow. were kids, yeah. So they are finally officially members, although they have been members in our hearts for years and years. Um, but in case you don't know them, um, this is Mark and Judy, and then their children, Mark and Andrew and Caitlin. Is that all correct? Yes. yes. Andrew Kyle. Kyle. This oh. is it's a typo on mine. I'm sorry. You didn't get away with Mark. Too. Kyle and Andrew and Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> How would it feel to have one sorry, son Kyle. named after dad and the other not? Anyways, um, these two are twins, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. Um, they are avid soccer players. The family has a combined 88 years of experience what? in soccer between all of them. Oh, my gosh. Um, they also love to ski in the winter and surf and boogie board in the summer. Thank you all for being here. We're so excited. Um, also, new members who are not here at the service or who couldn't be here today are Christy Albertson, Marianne and Samuel Diedrich, Diedrich and their children, James and Elizabeth. They were at our first service, and James did together in faith this morning. Debbie and Tony Pena and Catherine Slabaugh. Catherine actually works remotely for the Sierra Pacific Synod of the ELCA, so that's uh, Northern California and Nevada. So um, please welcome these folks as you meet them. Um, show them the ropes, show them your name and your face, what you can show them of your face. Um, and why don't we give them a round of applause? Thanks for being here. You guys can go back to your seats. To close, will you stand if you're comfortably able? And let's pray uh, for one another, for ourselves, for our community, our nation, and our world. Let's pray. Gracious God, we know that you are all in for love for us. And we ask God in our daily lives, as we leave this place, as we go throughout our weeks, that we might have just even a little bit of that love and that spirit of being all in for love as we go about our daily lives, as we interact with people both new to us and old friends and family. God, this morning we, uh, we come to you in prayer for those who are grieving. We pray especially for the family and friends of Dorothy Jacobson, and we pray for your blessing upon her service. And God, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones, those who are grieving the changes and transitions in life, and those who are mourning other, other griefs that, um, we, that we might be having. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray this morning that you might guide us in loving others, that our love might be perfected as your love is perfected, that we might share your grace and mercy and kindness to all who we enact with, and that we might love in new ways and ways that push us to be the best neighbors we can be. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in the midst of global pandemic that continues to drag on, um, we pray for, um, for healing in the midst of that. We pray for those who work in medical fields and other areas where they have to deal with the virus on a daily basis. We pray for those who have the disease, those who are working to cure it. And God, we just pray uh, that you might bring an end uh, to this global pandemic, um, that you might bring healing in our world. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray that you might guide us in loving ourselves as well. 
all of the love that we give you and we give others, we ask that you might teach us to also accept in ourselves, to accept your love, to accept the love of others, and to learn to love ourselves as well. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for those who are living in the aftermath of violence and natural disasters. We pray especially for new refugees who are coming here from Afghanistan. And we pray for all those around the world who are trying to rebuild in the wake of these things, God. May your healing power and your strength be with them. And guide those helping hands in their lives to make their lives even just a little bit better. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for those in need, especially those who are experiencing houselessness. We pray for our new guests who will be here on our campus through the Safe Parking Program, that they might find the things that they need, food, shelter, employment, all of those things. God, we lift all of these things to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, we'll close with our final song.
Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.